the brain automatically controls breathing. Consume more oxygen and we breathe more deeply. But it's not the falling oxygen level that signals the lungs to take in more air. The oxygen level drops as hard-working muscles burn it up, producing carbon dioxide. The buildup of this waste gas in the blood tells the brain when our bodies need to breathe more heavily. The carbon dioxide triggers an alarm in the base of the brain, automatically stimulating nerves that control the chest muscles and diaphragm. For a short time, you can consciously override this breathing reflex, but it's impossible to suffocate yourself by holding your breath. If you lose consciousness, the automatic reflex starts up again. It's human nature to try to extend our natural capabilities. A snorkel gives us the ability to breathe underwater. But a snorkel is only useful near the surface. As you dive deeper, the water pressure on the chest increases. It takes more effort to expand the lungs when you breathe in and the muscles of the chest and diaphragm have only limited power. This scuba diver solves the problem by using a tank of compressed air. It supplies air to her lungs at a pressure that matches the water pressure surrounding her body. With an independent supply like this, she can work at this depth for up to two hours. The deeper a person dives, the less time the air supply will last because of their need to breathe in more air to compensate for the increased water pressure. Divers can work as deep as a thousand feet where the pressure is almost 500 pounds per square inch. The low pressure at high altitudes causes problems too, due to lack of oxygen. Given enough time, however, we can adapt to living as high as 18,000 feet, where the atmospheric pressure is half that at sea level. Our bodies respond by producing more red blood cells and by growing more capillaries to improve the blood flow to our muscles. Above 30,000 feet, air is far too thin to breathe, so the inside of an aircraft is pressurized. In the unlikely event of a loss of pressure, passengers would suffer from oxygen starvation. In this simulation of a sudden pressure drop, water vapor condenses to a fine mist. Our volunteer in this experiment has been effectively shot up to 24,000 feet in just three seconds. Identifying the numbers on a deck of playing cards tests the volunteer's mental agility. Although she thinks she's feeling fine, and confident, she starts making mistakes after only one minute. Queen of hearts, nine of diamonds. Her brain cells are the first to feel the lack of oxygen. The hemoglobin in her blood is unable to absorb enough oxygen from the thin air and can't stop her brain cells from starving. While our logical higher brain is the first to deteriorate, our primitive lower brain sustains breathing and heartbeat as long as possible. Before our volunteer becomes unconscious, she's given the cure, pure oxygen, as she would on a real flight. In this experiment, the room pressure is lowered to simulate how increasing altitude lowers the boiling point of water. At a pressure equivalent to 60,000 feet above sea level, our blood would boil at body temperature. A pressurized suit with its own air supply is essential for survival at such extreme altitudes. 
especially if the brain has to work fast and make life or death decisions. Space is the ultimate in airlessness. In an almost perfect vacuum, a spacesuit provides all the safety features normally provided by the Earth's atmosphere. A comfortable pressure, abundant oxygen, and chemicals to trap the exhaled carbon dioxide. John has swum almost a mile. Now he goes into his last turn. As he powers his way to the finish, he takes the final few breaths from the ocean of air. He has stripped the air of its oxygen to burn the fuel for his muscles. Oxygen is an essential part of Earth's thin mantle of air, forever nurturing its fragile cargo in a cycle as old as life itself. <laughs>